a good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Uh, depending on where you are getting us from, welcome back uh, to Solar Power Engineering Lecture 2, Part 2, where we continue to talk about uh, meteorology and climatology. Uh, the next part that we look at is uh, basically seasonal and daily temperatures. We know that temperature is one important aspect when it comes to solar power production. The temperature will actually affect the power that is produced by a solar panel. So we have to look at that and also understand uh, in relation to also radiation. So temperature is basically degree or intensity of heat present in a press substance or object. Uh, various terms can be used to describe the temperature. Uh, it can be the lowest, highest, the range, the mean annual or mean daily temperature. Temperature can also be measured in units of degree Celsius or centigrade or the Kelvin. And a thermometer is an instrument that uh, can be used to measure the temperature of the press uh, object or substance. The daily and seasonal temperatures can also be influenced by the uh, sun's position. So the radiation that, and the energy received, which is affected by the rotation and the revolution of the earth will basically uh, determine uh, the temperature variations or differences of the presses. Uh, we know that the Earth revolves about uh, the Sun along an ecliptic plane. Uh, total variation can be up to 3% if we use the inverse square law, uh, that is radiation intensity, which varies by about 7% between the perihelion and aphelion. So if you look at the ecliptic plane uh, of the Earth around the Sun, we see that we have got January 3rd and July uh, 3rd uh, describing the perihelion and the perihelion uh, in relation to the position of uh, the Sun. Also, we know that uh, between the two points, the axis tilted at an angle of 23.5 degrees, is referred to as the earth of liquid or the tilt. So this tilt is also very important when we come to installation of the solar panel, uh, where the panel will face, whether it's the east side or if it's the north or the uh, south part, depending on which type, which side of the hemisphere uh, you are. We also know that the sun moves back and forth through the year between uh, 23.5 degrees north and 23.5 degrees south. So we find that the Earth, the Earth 23.5 degrees tilt also defines the 6.5 degrees latitude of the Arctic and Antarctic cycles. No sunlight reaches latitude higher than this in winter. So the two to basically produce the seasons that we are experienced in different places. Also, we see that when it comes to orbital uh, changes, uh, we have uh, the winter solstice, autumn equinox, summer solstice, and also the vernal uh, equinox, which is looking at June 21st, December 21st, September 22, and also March 21st. The Earth revolution around uh, the sun. All aspects of the Earth present day orbit have basically changed over time. The tilt of its axis, the shape of its path around the sun and the position of the seasons on this path. 
The changes in orbit have driven climatic changes on Earth, which are experienced. And also, depending on which side of the hemisphere it is, uh, this will actually affect and impact the amount of irradiation that is received by a place. Uh, one other aspect that uh, we have to look at is air pressure and winds. We might ask ourselves, why does the wind blow? How can we tell the wind's direction? This is also important because if you are going to have ground mounted solar systems, you have to have an idea of how much winds and the air pressure that you receive at a particular place. This will have impact on uh, the, 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 the installation, uh, the installation fixtures that you are going to use so that your installation will be able to withstand these winds. So the difference in air pressure and energy, there is basically a difference in air pressure and energy. Uh, pressure is basically mass of air above a given level and exerting a force over a unit area. Given level and derivation depicts a particular air pressure that a place is uh, ex uh, expected to experience. Air pressure measured using a barometer in inches or millimeter or centimeter of mercury. In most cases, the air pressure SI unit is the Pascal. Surface pressure drops as the air temperature rises. So this is also one important aspect that can also help us to determine uh, the aspects of air temperature and also surface pressure. For instance, if we, if, if we look at India, we look at uh, Zambia, we look at South Africa, we look at Sweden, we look at Canada and look at Japan, we find that you have different uh, surface pressure that are being experienced, which also attribute to different uh, air temperature as you rise in the altitude. So if, if we look at uh, this uh, wind flow patterns, we see that uh, in the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere, you have the different forces that are actually uh, occurring. One is in the anti-clockwise direction and one is the clockwise direction. So the flow of air down a pressure gradient, which is wind, will be different in the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. So if you are going to plan an installation for solar panel, these are some of the things you have to take into account. And also to cap it up, we see that the pressure gradient that is created by different in pressure over a distance, we also have an influence on the type of installation and also building that might be there. So we see that if we look at this figure, we have what is called the Carioris force, which causes a differing rotation of wind on a low pressure zone to a high pressure zone in the Northern Hemisphere and also in the Southern Hemisphere. These flow patterns are very important. Uh, if you are going to, to look at uh, installing a solar system and also even uh, a wind turbine, these are very important. The other thing that we have to also know is uh, what is the speed of the wind? So we use an anemometer to actually determine uh, what is the speed of the wind that we are experiencing in a particular area. In terms of direction, uh, which is also one important aspect, we use a wind vane or a wind sock to measure uh, in which direction uh, the wind is flowing. So we, in this uh, picture that is shown, uh, we have got a cup anemometer, also installed wind vane and cup anemometer uh, in the middle here. And then we also have the wind vane and the wind cup anemometer over there. Then apart from the winds, there's also an aspect of crowds and the precipitation, crowds and precipitation. 
Crowds are made up of water droplets or ice crystals uh, floating in the sky. Crowds uh, different. Crowds different names are given based on their shape and their height in the sky. So, for example, we can have the Silas, uh, Cumulus, Stratus, and the Nimbus forms the main names of the crowd. And then you can also have an intermediaries, which also uh, determine uh, um, the names of the crowds. For instance, for the highest crowds, we can have uh, the Cyrocumulus, Cyrus. Cyrostratus, cumulonimbus crowds, which are very high. In the middle level, we have got the autocumulus, autostratus. Then the lowest crowds, we have the stratus, cumulus, and this strat of cumulus. So in terms of pictorial illustration, this is what basically uh, I'm talking about. So if you look at this composition, it has got the crowds that I've actually mentioned with the, some vegetation being shown there. So crowds actually play an important uh, controlling role in global irradiation budget. So if you have got a certain crowds, you expect to have certain irradiation coming through. So this is actually very important when it comes to uh, solar power production. So for instance, crowds can have uh, a reflection of incoming solar radiation. They can also have an absorption of both solar and thermal uh, radiation. So this is actually very important. And also it's quite important to understand the regional weather and climate types, which can either be Arctic, polar, polar maritime, tropical continental or tropical maritime. Their origin and properties are actually shown uh, in this table. So we can actually have classification according to the Copan system, so which classifies climate into uh, five uh, types. That is tropical moist climates, dry climates, moist mid climates with mild winters, moist mid latitude climate with severe winters, and the polar climates. So we see that uh, the Copan uh, classification was further in, improved to include subdivisions. This resulted in what is known as the, the stone white classification, which is actually shown in this table here. So you have got the first A, B, C, D, E, and also the sub classifications, which different places belong to different types of climate. So the other thing that is also important to understand and know is the climate change. We know that the world is rich with different climatic types covering its surface. Climate change is uh, determined by climatic controls uh, that are in place. This can actually include sunshine intensity and its variation with latitude, land and water distribution, the currents of the ocean, prevailing winds, position of high and low pressure areas in the northern and southern hemisphere, mountain barriers, and also the altitude of an area. So some of the causes of climate changes include irradiation through the atmosphere, how much is being received, either more or less, changes in the atmospheric composition, changes in the earth surface, circulation pattern uh, of the ocean and atmosphere will actually distribute energy within the climate system. The earth orbital system, sulfate aerosols in tropospheres, mining activities and volcanic eruptions, which releases sulfur will actually have an impact on the climate subsequent on the weather, which will impact solar power production. So there is need to actually do a bit of weather forecasting, uh, which entails one has got to predict uh, the present state of the atmosphere. So to achieve forecasting, a network of observing stations are actually located in the entire world in almost all the countries. 
So the World Meteorological Organization, uh, which consists of 175 nation members, is responsible for the exchange of this weather data and accurate, accurate certification, meaning that I'm sitting in Zambia or sitting in South Africa or sitting in Sweden or sitting in India, I can actually have access to accurate uh, weather data that is present maybe for USA or for Brazil for the essence of estimating the solar power production of such uh, uh, places. Uh, weather forecasting tools are actually in place to help uh, the prediction of weather uh, in different uh, places. So we can actually have something like this. Uh, this shows for Shreftio uh, a two weeks uh, weather forecast. So the communication system we use today is also known as the AWIPS, Advanced Weather Interactive Processing System. Uh, which use of uh, two-dimensional charts of temperature, dew point, and which, which is able to predict weather on a small area, which we can say a mesoscale. And also other weather forecasting methods are there, which is routine daily forecasting of weather by computer using mathematical equation or numerical weather prediction or using atmospheric models that describe the present state of the atmosphere. So accuracy of model in use basically determine the probability of weather forecasting success or closeness to the actual. However, sometimes this forecast will go wrong uh, because there might be some inherent flaws in computer models that limit the accuracy of weather forecast. And then some of the majority of models are not global in coverage and errors are able to creep in along the model's boundaries. Uh, many models cannot adequately interpret many of the factors that influence surface weather. And also even with better observing technology techniques and near computer model, there are also uncertainties, which can actually be um, aleatory or epistemic uncertainties. Then we also have ensemble forecasting and persistence uh, forecasting. There's also steady state or trend forecasting and also forecasting uh, concerning the rules of thumb uh, that are there. Uh, weather forecasting models actually have been developed and are in use. Uh, so it's actually based on the probability of occurrence. So all these models will actually help in the prediction, but sometimes some things can not turn out to be the way it should be. So having looked at uh, uh, these factors, it ends lecture two, part two. Uh, thank you very much. Like, share, subscribe. If you have got questions, send to uh, inoculurio1 at gmail.com and I'll be able uh, to answer uh, your queries. And also uh, what we have covered will help uh, in actually understanding uh, the patterns and behaviors of solar power production uh, when we actually dive into the actual, uh, the actual production. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.